I'm sorry, guys. I can't sit here and tell you LeBron James is a pussy for leaving that game one of the NBA Finals last night against San Antonio because he got cramps. And I'm not going to, you know, downplay it and say, oh, he's, he's a little sissy who should come out and wear a skirt because he got some menstrual cramps. Oh, boy, what a wuss. Now, as someone who has played a number of sports myself, I can tell you firsthand, getting a cramp in the middle of competition or even just when I'm going out on a run, I go jogging every week, getting a cramp is absolutely 100% debilitating. Even if it's something that you can play through and toughen up, your level of play is nowhere near what it could be being cramp free. Um, people are just downplaying this like it's like, oh, it's just, a, it's just like a tummy cramp or something. It's no big deal. He should have just toughened up. Bull fucking shit. You get a solid quad cramp, a calf cramp, anything like that, you're sitting the fucking bench because you're a detriment to your team. And on top of that, playing with a full out cramped muscle just outright increases your ability or your chances of completely tearing that muscle. It's best just to step out, sit down, get fluids in you, rest, and live to fight another day. And that's what LeBron did last night. And Spolstra actually, made the best coaching decision of his career, told LeBron to sit back down when it looked like he was getting up with three minutes in the game, and he said, don't even think about it. And we all know what happened last night. It was a back-and-forth, coin-flip type game. LeBron leaves, and the San Antonio Spurs pull the fuck away and win by 15 points. I think they said it was like a 19-point swing once LeBron left the game. So it just goes to show you what an absolute just presence he is on both ends of the ball. Stop and score. And he was on Dan Danny Green all night, and... Um, uh, Pretty much, once LeBron was out of the game, Danny Green was dropping threes like it was nothing, dropping shots all over the court. But uh, all, all that aside, and everyone that wants to call LeBron James a wuss for not toughening up, uh, uh, get realistic. What was done last night was the right thing. He shouldn't have played through that. It sucks that the Heat lost. It sucks that the Heat could have, might have, should have, could have, would have won if he was still in the game. We don't know. The outcome might have been exactly the same for all we know if he stayed in the game and didn't have cramps and wasn't fatigued through the whole game because the air conditioner was broken in San Antonio. And I know people were like, oh, it's sabotage. They knew LeBron had a history of getting cramps. Shut the fuck up with that. Both teams played under the same conditions. That is just really reaching for an excuse. Anyway, um, it sure as hell didn't look like it affected him in the first three and a half quarters because he was dropping buckets all over the place and having a hell of a game. Put up 25 points and didn't even finish the goddamn game. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, just everyone out there calling LeBron a pussy again. I, I, I'd be the first one to call him a pussy if he was doing a flat-out pussy move. Now, getting on to my second point, I put out a tweet last night and a bunch of other tweets that a number of you replied to. I said, um, after the game was over, I said, you know, Kobe and Jordan never left a, a finals game because of cramps. And a lot of people took that as, you know, like, oh, are you kidding me? They, like, they would be tough enough to, to go through that and go on and play? That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is the perception of what happened in this game one is going to be the reigning perception for LeBron James' performance in the series if, if the Heat go on to lose. And that's the realistic reality of things here. I kept telling people he, that were talking back to me last night saying like, you know, um, oh yeah, you know, you don't think LeBron's tough or something, he should have stayed on there. No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that the public opinion, the people that were on the fence of considering LeBron in the conversation for, you know, quote unquote best ever, granted, there's still a lot of his career left to play before he really gets solidified in that. But when it does come the time and day when it's like, you know, he, he's quite possibly the best player we've ever seen. Now, I personally may feel that right now because I think he's the best mix of strength, speed, and skill that I've ever seen in my life. As far as comparing to someone like Wilt Chamberlain that I've never seen a game of, you know, that's a whole different issue. But um, ranking him against Jordan, 
I think, yeah, just all-out skill set, LeBron James is a better player. Now, obviously, career accomplishments are significantly significantly different between the two, so I'm not going to say, oh, LeBron James had a much better career than Michael Jordan. I'm just saying from a skill set standpoint, what LeBron James can do is just fucking filthy, dirty, sick talent. Now, going back to how people are going to perceive this and how I said, um, you know, uh, uh, how I said Kobe and Jordan never left a fr that left the game in the finals because they got cramps. That is a realistic perception that people need to realize. And it's not saying that Jordan and Kobe are tougher. It's just that Jordan and Kobe don't have a quote unquote flaw like that on their resume. Now, again, it's, it's nothing against LeBron. I mean, he could have hydrated, you know, to the moon and did a significant amount more training. He probably still would have got cramped or whatever. The point is, is that these players like a, like, like a Kobe and a Jordan are known for playing with the flu. Kobe injured his Achilles and went on and played. Like I said, playing with the flu is the infamous Jordan playing in the playoffs with the, the flu. He had like a fever of 102 that day and still managed to play. You hear like stories like that and then it's like with LeBron, like what did he do in a tough situation? Oh, he got cramps and sat the bench. That's what the people are going to have perception-wise if the Heat go on to lose this series. They'd be like, yeah, Kobe's good and all. I mean, LeBron's good and all, but he had that game where he got cramps in the finals and he let his team down and the Spurs just pulled away and decimated him. Like, they could have won that game, but he wasn't tough enough. And you people need to realize that because knowing this firsthand in Philadelphia, my God, how many fucking times have I heard to, had to hear McNabb's a great quarterback and all, but he threw up in the final minute of a Super Bowl and let his team down. That is one of the most outstanding legacy marks for Donovan McNabb's career. Forget all the passing stats and touchdowns and everything. The average fan will absolutely remember that one thing and one thing alone for McNabb's career. And that is absolutely pertinent to what happened last night. Because so many people are coming back to me and saying, no, people aren't going to care about this as far as his legacy. Bullshit! Tell me why so many people harp on that McNabb throwing up in the huddle at the Super Bowl. You hear it to this day. He, he basically choked and threw up in the final minute of the Super Bowl and let his team down. That's what people stick. That's the stig stigmata that's stuck on McNabb. And that's the stigma that's going to stick to stick to LeBron from last night. So many people are going to label him as someone that just wasn't tough enough. Now, I think what he did was the absolute right thing. And again, Spolstra, you know, best decision of his career to tell LeBron to sit back down when he got up with three minutes left to come back in the game. It was the brightest decision Spolstra's ever made. But no one's going to remember him in a few years once LeBron leaves the team and he gets fired for the heat sucking again. But that's a whole different thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that LeBron's a pussy, that he did the wrong thing. But the thing is, is that this is going to leave an indelible mark on his career if, if, if the Heat go on to lose. If the Heat go on to win, no one's going to give a flying fuck about what happened in that first game. If anything, it's going to be like, wow, LeBron overcomes, you know, uncertainty and may end up affecting his leg legacy in a more positive light. But... Enough about that. The one final thing I want to end this on is this whole thing and the story of this franchise's career is the San Antonio Spurs just seem to just not even be getting credit. I mean, very few people are even giving them credit for, for what was a very good back and forth game last night. And who knows, maybe the Heat would have won if LeBron stayed in. Maybe the score would have been exactly the same if he stayed in and had no sort of cramp of any sort and whatever. But all I... New dog. Shh. New dog! Good boy. Sorry, he sees a squirrel or something out front. Um, the Spurs. And, like, the average basketball fan... Barely even knows that Duncan and Popovich have <laughs> titles. All right.
I see the squirrel too! I know, it's very annoying. He's stealing nuts out of the front yard. Come here. Come here. <gasps> Look at this. Look at this. Go fetch it. Anyway. I just, I just have a feeling that, you know, this series is going to end quick. Maybe LeBron gets another cramp or two, and it becomes a series of, well, the Spurs won, but the best player in the world had health issues. So it's like another asterisk on, on them. And I don't know. I just, I just feel for Spurs. I have no dog in this race. I don't give a flying shit about either two of these teams. I'm rooting for the Spurs simply because they deserve to get credit where credit is so overdue. Like Popovich and Duncan, I mean, how many 50 plus win seasons does Popovich have to have before we start comparing him with the great coaches in the game? How many more rings does Duncan have to get before he gets considered to be one of the greatest forwards in the game? It's like they just they don't get any credit in the stats that, that Duncan has put up. And the stats that he's put up this late in his career. And Parker and Ginobili. Ginobili is going to be a fringe Hall of Famer guy. Parker is a definite Hall of Famer. And... It's just like, what does this team got to do to get credit? And it's like, it's like, oh, okay, they can beat the Heat, the two-time defending champs, but now there's this secondary story that's watering down what could be a very, you know, storybook, you know, chapter in the career of that franchise. Anyway, I just I, I feel bad for the Spurs and the Spurs fans that they have to they have to turn on ESPN and see nothing but nonstop talk about LeBron today. It's like, oh, by the way, by the way, the, the, the Spurs won, but now back to LeBron. Um, is, uh, we have an update about the, the, the body temperature of his quad right now. Just, anyway. Um, again, LeBron's not a pussy. If you guys think that, then whatever. You're free to think that. Feel free, feel free to still hate on LeBron for the decision. Even I've moved well beyond that. Because, again, I just want to see good ball. And I saw a damn good game last night until the best player playing the game right now. Had to sit the bench. And rightfully so sit the bench. Anyway, um, here's hoping game two can just pick back up and that the fucking air conditioning works in San Antonio. Um, and to those of you that think that it's a big conspiracy, again, both teams had to play under the exact same conditions. Anyway, have a good day, everyone. And New Dog, thank you for not flipping out any more than you did. Take care, guys.